two poems for the romantic from the anti-romantic. And the anti-romantic is me, Helena. You may be wondering why is there a blonde chick in a veil dressed as a goth? Well, this is how I feel inside when it comes to love. <laughs> you know, kind of gloomy, dark, a bit depressed. But I want to get married, maybe, sort of. <laughs> so, these set of poems are inspired by me, Helena, a visually impaired person searching for love. Yeah, literally looking for love. Let me just set the scene for you. Yeah, let me set the scene for you. So you're walking down the street and you see a really, really attractive guy across the road. He has a grey beanie hat and blue jeans and you're just like, Wow. Wow, isn't he beautiful? And then your friend taps you on the shoulder and goes, Hells, Hells, that's an old woman. Uh, that grey beanie hat is her grey hair. And then you just want to die. And then you just want to die. But it's okay, because we all have crushes, right? Like, who's had a crush before? Oh, come on now. <laughs> Don't lie to me. Who's had a crush before? Yeah, one. Yeah, got another one. Got another one. Come on. So we normally have crushes at high school, right? Right. Well, mine was somebody called Joe. I'm not telling you his last name because, you know, rest in a small place. Um, but uh, <laughs> Joe was wonderful. And the reason why I liked Joe is because he was quiet. That was the only reason why I liked Joe, because he was quiet. <laughs> and um, Joe found out that he liked me. Yeah, yeah. And he found out that I liked him. And then he used to run. <laughs> like, physically run away from me. If he saw me coming around the corner, he'd go, <laughs> across the playground. But this is the best bit. So, uh, in English class, <laughs> my uh, teacher sat him right in front of me, so Joe could not run away. <laughs> so uh, when we fall in love, we kind of become addicted to that person. And when I mean addicted, we kind of like, watch them. I find out more about them. And we just watch. And maybe watch some more. <laughs> addicted. So this poem is called Addicted. He says I'm addicted to you and I sit there and pretend to have a clue. An understanding of what he means. He says my face is a screen saved inside his head. But I wonder if he thinks I'm just a pretty face that should just sit and wait in his bed. Probably not. But uh, maybe he uh, generally likes me. What with my uncensored choice of words and knobbly knees? You see, we never truly see what others see or understand how a soul can be set free. Addiction is key, both beautiful and dangerous, like the heart of a storm, a new chapter is born. So uh, my uh, love life continues in a really bad direction. Um, my friends like to call this the bus men saga. Yeah, yeah, because when you're a visually impaired person, you spend a lot of time on the bus, and I mean a lot of time. But, this is the fun bit, it's a captured audience, isn't it? Because they can't go anywhere. They're stuck right there. The only way out is through the emergency exit. So, uh, I had a few bus men in my time, um, but one was called Adam. That's not his real name, again, rest it's a small place. And uh, Adam was beautiful. He looks a bit like how I look now. You know, black eyeliner, could be, could be fringe. And I just used to just watch and watch and watch some more. And so one day I got up the nerve to speak to Adam. Oh, okay, I get too excited. <laughs> and uh, I found out his name was Adam, and it was amazing. So when I got to college, all my friends were like, How was your bus journey this morning? I was going, It was amazing. I found out a bus guy's name was, it was Adam. 
And my friend, who is not my friend anymore, says, uh, I have a cousin called Adam. Now you think there'd be thousands and thousands of Adams out there, right? Wrong. <laughs> so he messages his cousin going, hey, hey, did you meet a girl called Helen on the bus this morning? Yeah, dude, I did, why? Uh, she loves you. Uh, she wants to have your babies. And she wants to get married with you. <laughs> it gets worse. He replies, oh, that is really, really weird. And I have a girlfriend. To this day, if Adam sees me, sees me, it's been a couple years now, he will move to the next bus stop. He'll physically get up and move further down the road. I've seen him avoid the, the bus before, get on the wrong bus just to avoid me. Love is odd. It whispers, it shouts, love is odd. It makes your inside squirm and you learn about all the things you don't like about yourself. Love is odd. And if we're talking about odd, we might as well talk about my ex-boyfriend. So, uh, he used to eat tuna for breakfast? Exactly, yeah, yeah, he was a bit odd. And he was eight years older than me. Sorry, mum and dad. Um, I, there's not much more to say, but... Uh, so my 96-year-old nan, right, was in the hospital. Yeah, it gets a bit sad now, sorry. And uh, it was probably the last time I was going to see her, and he knew that. So the gent waited until I got home to dump me. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it was pretty bad. Um, so this is a poem I wrote at the time. Uh, I'm over it, I promise, I am over it. Um, and it's called, uh, I love too hard. I love too hard, like a hammer against a brick wall. I fall so deep that I drown. The sound of my tears crying over you sound like a waterfall. Falling in love is great until you hit the floor. Bruises cover my bones from the times that I have beaten myself up when I am alone, and you are not there. You say that you love me, but I have been broken before. There are scars, red and raw, on my chest. Battle scars from my ex. It's my fault for covering the wounds and salt and letting my emotions fester. You don't understand how many times I'm willing to fall to find the right one. The one who appreciates my rhymes, who takes out the time out of their day to check I am okay. Meanwhile, I am cracked, broken, used for I love too hard. It's okay, it's okay, it is okay, because there are many ways of getting over an ex. One, you can burn all their stuff. <laughs> Highly flammable, but enjoyable, so, you know. Number two, you can cut their heads out of all the pictures. <coughs> now, this is a lot of fun, but if that person goes missing under mysterious circumstances and they come to your house, then... Looks a bit dodgy, doesn't it? <laughs> or if you're like me, you can write a poem. So this is called Slow Time. I'm a waiting. I'm a waiting. I'm a waiting. Contemplating what really came out of your mouth. Like, wow, are you really that thick? What you just said made me feel physically sick. Dear God, were you dropped on your head as a child? Because that accusation is vile. Two plus two equals four, and we do not want to hear any more of your crap. And at that, I think of all of this whilst they're running their mouth, hoping they will run out of steam. But believe me, ladies and gents, this poem is not inspired by a dream. Some people are just really, really stupid. Thank you. So um, there is, there 
there is a good side. So I was single for three weeks. I'm sorry, I'm not really sorry. I am sorry, kind of. And um, during those three weeks, I kind of felt so much happier. And it shows you that being with the wrong person can be actually really bad for you. And at the end of the day, oh, I'm getting really sloppy now. I'm sloppy, I'm sorry. Uh, but we should all like ourselves because we are the only people that we have, right? So this is a poem about self-love and it's called Balloon Brain. My brain blows up like a balloon. I'm a loon, a tick. Sometimes I feel sick with fear. Sometimes I squirm when you are near. And sometimes I feel light as a feather. And sometimes I just need to pull myself together because one day my balloon brain will pop. Until then, I will not stop filling it with fresh air. So, he's not here at the moment, which is really embarrassing. I do actually have a boyfriend. He exists. <laughs> he does exist, I swear. Um, he saw me at Preston Fringe this week and he was hiding under the table when I said this poem. It's not, it's not that sloppy, um, but it's a poem called Thank You. Bubbles in my stomach whenever you are near. With you, I no longer fear. Thank you for returning me back to my original state before it was too late. Thank you for doing nothing really, just being you. Thank you. So I'm going to end this set on a poem called Flowers. Um, I watched a YouTube video. I like watching YouTube videos about uh, charity shops, not gonna lie. And, um, <laughs> but it came up on my um, it came up on my feed. Um, do you know you see those things like uh, stranger asks other stranger question or this stranger does this. Well, this stranger asked another stranger to call up their crush and ask them out on a date. And this person said, "Yeah, I'll go on a date with you." And they said, well, "How does that feel?" And they said, "Well, it feels like there's flowers growing in my chest." And I thought, that is so beautiful, I could write a poem about that. So I did. And uh, this poem is called Flowers. I feel like there's flowers growing in my chest. With you, you make me have a spring in my step. You push away the autumn leaves, the dust, the dirt, so I can finally breathe. Your warmth radiates and hydrates my dandelion lungs. Spring has just begun, but soon our summer of heat will commence. Don't build a fence around my hyacinth heart. Let my love grow freely and unruly, and we'll see how it goes. You never know how long it takes for a flower to grow. Thank you! That was Helen Raskoff, Poems and Rants from the Anti-Romantic. If you want to put money in the, in the bucket, you know, the girl needs money, so uh, <laughs> go for it, but thank you! <laughs>